Brothers, sisters, animals, I come before you today with a specific mission. You don't really have to worry about it because I'm the one going on the mission. What might that mission be, you ask? Oh, ho, ho. $7.99 value village laptop. It's about to become a Steam Deck, because what else would I do with it? Anyway, as the sticker implies, I got this laptop for $7.99 from uh, the place where all good electronics come from, Value Village. If you don't know what that is, uh, it's like it's just like a thrift store chain in the USA. They mostly got like clothes and other stupid stuff, but today they happen to have the pinnacle of computing. I actually haven't looked at this any more than seeing that it's a Lenovo laptop. You know as much as I do at this point. Uh, that's basically nothing. Got a pretty awesome chunk missing right here, but honestly, other than that, I'm flipping this thing around, it's not too bad. I'm really, really hoping that Windows 8 is not installed on this. Just like the last laptop we tried this on, someone has been in here. <laughs> Which is only good news, because now it means I don't have to do as much work. I'm sure nobody could have possibly ruined this thing previously. Yep, look at that, comes right off. I don't know if it's Value Village's doing or whoever donated this, but the hard drive is just gonzo, which is a, it's actually a really good thing. Not for me, but you know, for whoever donated it, because if I got my hands on their data, like, <laughs> game over. For them, not me, don't get me wrong. But I always come prepared. So we're gonna be throwing this 500 gig Samsung SSD in there from what was once a server. You know, yeah, this is a server. Yep, this is fine. I don't want that flopping around in there though. Uh, actually, hold on. Okay, as an agent of chaos, we're gonna flip a coin on this one. And I don't have any coins on hand, so we're gonna flip a DS game. Guitar Hero side up, we use tape. Back side up, I become chaotic evil. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> It's okay, I didn't need to take it out ever again. Why would I ever need to take this SSD out? This is going to be the greatest gaming PC I've ever built. Now that we have a solid foundation, let's take a look inside. Usually there's like a sticker somewhere along the edges that shows you the CPU. You can kind of figure out which generation and which model from there, but we've got nothing to work with here. So at the very least, I can tell you that it's Windows 8 era by this sticker. We're looking at anywhere from fourth gen to like sixth gen-ish Intel. I mean, that's assuming it's Intel at all, it could be AMD. And if that happens, then this is not gonna be a good time. Oh God, I hope it's not AMD. Well, there's also a model here. So I guess it's a Flex 3 1480 80R3. That doesn't mean anything to me. And I could Google it. But that's no fun. However, I am able to see though that this needs 20 volts at 3.25 amps to charge it, which is important to know considering I don't have the charger for it. They, they didn't have it with the laptop, but luckily we're able to do something kind of cool here. So here is the charging port for the laptop. It's seen better days as you can uh, see, but the outer set of these pins here in the connector, I believe those are ground. And then the center ones are though gonna be where you put 20 volts. So what I'm gonna do here is put one set of my multimeter wires on the outer side, and then I'm gonna touch this to ground. Okay, that beep means that they're, they are connected. So that's ground. And just to sanity check myself, I'm gonna connect it to the middle one as well and then touch it here. Yeah, we're getting nothing. And all I'm touching right here is the outside of a USB port, and those are almost always grounded. So from there, I set my power supply to be 20 volts, and all I gotta do is connect ground and power, and then we can charge this thing. Just to make my life a little easier, I'm gonna just hook the ground into the USB port here. And you can see here, we are actually giving it some juice, uh, but it is blinking, which I'm pretty sure means uh, it's not actually charging. There's probably a battery issue, but we don't need batteries where we're going. All right, moment of truth here. Uh, uh, turn it off. <laughs> well, that was a horrible noise. Oh, the fan is pretty messed up. Oh wait, there's a screw in there. How did that even happen? Okay, well, I think we figured out where one of the mystery screws from the back of the case went. Oh, you know what? You know what's in there? I can't say it, because we don't get to see it. It's covered by shielding. All right, attempt number two. Oh, should probably turn the power supply on. All right, here we go. I can hear the fan, it's kicking on. Um, oh, I think we made it to the BIOS, but it's not happy. No, it looks like we're in some kind of boot menu. Let's try, um, let's try every single key. Why not? Aha. Okay, so we have made it to a boot manager. Usually it'll give you an option here to like kick you to setup or to the BIOS, but not this time. Okay, through the power of Googling it, I've discovered it's F2. 
Yo, you see that? Intel i7 6500U. Dude, this thing is significantly better than I expected. Not gonna lie, I was like, I would've been happy with an i5. <laughs> I, I went into this thinking it was gonna be like a Celeron or something. Dude, we, we can work with this. Okay, so now at this point, I'm gonna see if I can capture the screen uh, with HDMI, and then I'm gonna go grab a Steam Deck OS installer flash drive. Okay, we're ready. Here we go. Give it the old restart. Oh, here we go. You know, I expect this to go easier or better than the Toshiba laptop. So far, I'm not, not too impressed. Actually, no, I'm not gonna default the BIOS. <laughs> I don't wanna screw something up and put it into like fast mode or whatever, and then all of a sudden we just can't come back to the BIOS. Hey, there we go. Cool. Hello, ISO installer copy to RAM. Huh? Okay, I would click that, but I'm gonna continue on the main story quest for now. Oh, shoot. My power supply turned off and then back on again. I think we might have overdrawn from it. Uh, that's not good. I wonder if there's a way to allocate more current to this thing. Current adjustment maximum. Let's go. Okay, well it didn't shut off this time. Welcome to SteamOS right there. You wanna know why this worked? Because I got the old good luck charm. Bruh. Okay, so we're drawing like 35, 40 watts. Uh, that's fine. Okay, we got a little blinky dude here. Oh, this is awkward. Okay, I faintly see a mouse over on the capture output, but I just have like a blinking underscore on the laptop. Um, and now we have nothing. But I do have a horrible feeling that we're gonna be limited by the power supply here. Because upon closer inspection, we can only draw 1.5 amps from this output. And, uh, yeah. I did not anticipate running into um, brownout problems. So I don't have the actual charger that I need for this. I could Amazon Prime one and come back to this tomorrow, but you already know we're not gonna do that. Okay, this is the power adapter from the Toshiba. 19 volts, 6.32 amps. We lose a volt, but we gain amps. I'd say that's a net positive. Thank you for your service. This is horrible. Actually, like do not do anything you see on my channel. But you know what? It's working, I mean. <laughs> but admittedly, I will be upsetty spaghetti if my apartment catches on fire. Bro, it's still boot looping. I just destroyed this power adapter for no reason. Okay, so I'm gonna try WineSap OS or WinSap OS. I still have no idea which one it is. I need to write the image for it directly to the SSD. And uh, yeah. Okay, how awful is this gonna be? Oh, that actually wasn't too bad. Okay, so we've directly imaged the drive at this point. So, no flash drive required. Uh, I'm gonna pick this one that says Linux Steam OS. Oh, bam, look at that, we're in. Sweet. Just like that. Yeah, dude, Holo ISO bad. I don't know, it hasn't worked well for me at all at this point. Every time I've tried it. Okay, next order of business though is that we gotta connect to the internet. And luckily the setup has uh, ascended a little bit since last time. So we actually have proper ethernet. It's got a pretty wacky port though. So, I don't know. It doesn't really want to stay in, so I'm just gonna put that right there. There we go. Okay, so we have a mouse, but uh, not much else. It seems to be pondering whether it's gonna do anything or not. Oh, hey, look at that, we have a desktop now. Uh, I don't think it likes our ethernet. It's just this stupid port. It's like a half size ethernet jack. Okay, well this is gonna bottleneck the shit out of our network speed, but for now I'm just gonna use a USB Ethernet NIC. Okay, the first time setup requires an internet connection to download the correct graphics drivers. Select OK once connected. We have internet, so we're good to go. Okay, select your desired graphics driver. We're gonna go with Intel here, because I'm pretty sure there's no dedicated GPU to this thing. Do you want to install the glorious egg roll variant of Proton? For Steam? Dude, I have no idea what that is, but we're gonna do it. I hate it when it wants me to reboot. I always feel like it's just not gonna come back on. All right, here we go. But before it comes back on, there's something really important that I actually have to tell you guys. And it's that this video, believe it or not, is sponsored by PCBWay. I assume you've already heard of PCBWay before at this point. They do custom electronic circuit boards, 3D printing, CNC machining, all that cool stuff. But you might be thinking to yourself, that's pretty neat, but I don't really have a use for that. I don't even know how to design my own PCBs. And that's fine, because guess what? Same. 
So what can PCBWay do for people like you and me? Well, recently I've discovered that PCBWay has a section on their website called Shared Projects, and it's like Thingiverse, but for electronic projects. Here's a few things I found just by searching Nintendo. Okay, so we've got a Game Boy Color Type-C power adapter board in here, that's sick. An N64 cartridge dumper, that's really sick. And here we got a replacement power supply for the NES. All of these things are made by the community, and PCBWay gives you the option to add almost everything you need for these projects to your cart instantly. They'll even have the whole thing assembled for you at their factory. There's really never been a better time to get into modding and creating with a utility like this. Head over to PCBWay.com after the video to get a look at some of these awesome projects and you can also get $5 off your first order as a new user. Everything is looking good. I'm gonna actually load into the Steam desktop client here. Okay, so it looks like it can't initialize OpenGL. Oh boy, okay, so it sounds like we don't have the right graphics driver. <laughs> I couldn't figure out that OpenGL driver thing. So we're gonna just start a clean install of Linux Mint uh, and hope things go better. Okay, cool. So we've gotten to a point where we have some form of Steam installed. And if I remember correctly, I think that big picture mode by default now boots you into the Steam OS interface. Oh, sweet, yeah. I've never actually tried this until now. I've, I've always used the old big picture interface, which is horrid. So let me connect a controller. Oh, wow, yeah, this is like the exact Steam interface. It's running like hot garbage, but you know, it's fine. Um, actually here. Oh, oh, hello? <laughs> well, that ain't immersion breaking or anything. <laughs> I'm gonna take the resolution down. iPhone disconnected. What? So I'm gonna take the resolution down to 720p here because this is only, let's see, what is this actually? This is only a Intel HD graphics 520 uh, graphics chip here. Well, I was gonna look up the Steam Deck's GPU in here and then compare it for you guys, but I don't know if they have it in their database. We'll just put it up against a couple of common graphics cards that people might already know. So here's the order of them, and as you can see, we're uh, <laughs> not working with much. <laughs> we have solidly 6% of the performance of an RTX 2060. So yeah, that's why we are in 720p. Okay, so I'm gonna let all this stuff download, and then we're gonna come back and see how it plays. Half-Life 2 is running fantastic here, as it should. The game held on to 60 FPS most of the time, but you can see it drop to 40 or even 30 FPS occasionally. Definitely the most annoying part here though is the incessant stutters throughout every single part of the map whenever a new model or a new sound or something was loaded. It's playable for sure, don't get me wrong, but it's a little bit frustrating. Black Mesa suffers from similar issues. Under the hood, Half-Life 2 and Black Mesa both use the same engine, so we see a lot of the same problems here that we did with Half-Life 2. One thing that Black Mesa seemed to be better about for some reason is that when the level went on, the stutters and FPS drops weren't really as bad. So again, playable, but obviously not optimal. Doom 2016 tried to run. It, it really did. But you know, when you're only getting 12 FPS in the menu, well, you know, you can kind of figure that you're probably not going to be getting in game. So no, it can't run Doom. Skyrim is running, well, I mean, it's running, I guess. This is the one game here that I really wouldn't consider playable. I mean, you can play the game, yes, but this is like sub Xbox and PS3 version. Hardly ever cracked 20 FPS, stutters real bad, and was generally just a uh, horrible time. TF2 runs absolutely horrible, unless you dump the settings and then it, it's fine. I had a decent time getting my ass kicked in an all scout versus all heavy match. I'm pleasantly surprised with how it's running here considering this is a Skyle server. I got into a 3v3 here in Rocket League with bots on all of the lowest settings and the frame rate really never even went above 27 FPS. But the thing is though is that it was so consistent the entire time that after a while you don't really notice and it's not that big of a deal. Eventually it kind of just feels like you're playing the Switch version, honestly. Overall, really not that bad of a time. Well, everybody, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for coming along for the ride once again. If you enjoyed the video, go check out the other videos on my channel. I do stupid stuff with gaming hardware all the time, and there's always more in the pipeline, so get subscribed if you wanna see that. I've got links down below in the description if you wanna support me. But anyway, that's it. See ya.